welcome to the spring episode of Take 20. I'm your host, Trey Duke. And I'm Maria Johnson, the principal of Scales Elementary School. You may not know this, but March is Music in the Schools Month. And music can be found or created just about anywhere. That's right, from crickets chirping to birds singing, and of course, in our schools. Let's take a quick visit to Northfield and see their wind instruments. Get your straw ready, Dr. Duke. Okay. Miss No, that sounds awesome. What are you playing? I am playing a piece by uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach. Tell yes. me about him. Well, did you know that he was from the Baroque time period, which was a long time ago? That was about 1600 to 1750. He was a great organist, considered one of the greatest of all time. If you ever hear any organ pieces, chances are he probably wrote them. Okay. This month is his birthday. He's going to be like 300 years old. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty I'm, old. Right. And I'm practicing this because it's Music in Our Schools Month. And so I want to share this with my students. That's going to be perfect. It sounds awesome. Thank you. While you were playing, it reminded me of how I use my fingers on a recorder as well. And mm -hmm. it seemed to be very similar. It is. I noticed that when you were playing your flute, the more fingers you added to cover the holes, the lower the pitch. Exactly. And I want to see if it does the same thing on my recorder. Yeah, it works. It does. Why does it do that, Mr. Hill? Well, I believe that as we place our fingers over the holes, whether it is a recorder or a flute, mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're extending the length of the tube of air that's vibrating. Okay. And as we extend the length of the tube of air, it's coming all the way down and it's producing a lower pitch because it's vibrating slower. And if we raise our fingers up, it is a smaller amount of tube of air that's vibrating and it produces a higher pitch. Gotcha. That, that, which that, is, that works on both instruments. Which is pretty cool. Hey, Mr. Hill, did you know that we can actually make an instrument at home? Show me. That well, sounds fantastic. All you need is some scissors. Okay. And a straw. Okay. Here we go. And you're going to take the, your scissors with your parent, parent help right. when you're a child. They are sharp. Yes and you are going to make a point in your straw. Okay. So you make just cut a little side. Okay, one towards side. the end? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then take the other side and cut it into a point. It almost looks like you have an arrow. Ooh. Very okay. good. Is that gonna work, do you That's think? It's gonna work, I think. And then you put it in your mouth and you try to blow it. <laughs> good job, Mr. Hill. I like that. That was good. Now. It's a little hard to change pitches on this because it's just a tube and if you try to blow it and move your fingers up and down it doesn't work great. But I wonder how we could make it higher? So we learned that the air vibrating inside of the cylinder, if it is a smaller amount of air, it's going to produce a higher pitch and if it's a longer tube with more air, it's going to produce a lower pitch. So, if we can change the length of this tube. Mm, I bet that would work. I think it would. So we might have to make it shorter. Let's do I it. I think so. Well, let's try it. Good job, it made it a higher pitch. It is a higher that pitch. That does work. It proves our theory. It does. So, if they try this at home. Yes, if you do try it at home, make sure to come in and tell your music teacher that it worked, or if you need help with it to, to make it happen. Yes, yeah, so we hope that you enjoyed our music lesson and have a wonderful music in our schools month. That was great. Now I'm not sure if our cafeterias can handle that music, but the straw recorder is definitely something you want to try at home. And I am sure parents will love having that music around their dinner table. I'm sure they will. So parents, if you just love it and you want to thank Mr. Hill directly, let us know. We'll send you his email. <laughs> you know, Dr. Duke, it is getting warmer outside and the school gardens are beginning to grow. Miss Sherry is at Irma Siegel with Farmer Joanna and they're going to look at what goes on beneath the school gardens. Worm farming. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. I am at Irma Siegel today and I have the pleasure of being with Farmer Joanna. 
Joanna, I hear you have a really cool job. Can you tell us a little bit about your day? I sure can. I get to work with the two gardens, one at Irma Siegel and one at Northfield Elementary, and grow vegetables to be eaten in the cafeteria with students and to also work with students to use our garden as an outdoor classroom. Um, and to learn a lot from it, and that's a wonderful job. Absolutely, it sounds amazing. Do you have anything growing in the gardens now? I do. I have spinach and carrots that have survived the whole winter. I planted them in the fall, and this will be, I'll pick the spinach for the third time in the next couple of weeks. I don't know about you, but I'm just so excited to finally see some signs of spring. Mm -hmm. And you know, springtime brings rain. Just like today, it's a rainy day, and I actually saw worms on the sidewalk when I was coming in this morning and worms are beneficial to gardens aren't they? They sure are. What do they do? They eat the waste in the garden and they turn it into fertilizer for plants. So um, there are garden recyclers. They create something useful out of something that's a waste product. Oh I love that. And you know I'm always looking for a good book. And I just happened to find a book about a worm farmer and it's titled Winnie Finn Worm Farmer. Y'all have something in common. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love the name Winnie. Mm -hmm. She's the main character. Would you like to take a look at it with me? I would love to. Okay. After a rain, Winnie found worms on the sidewalk, just like I did this morning when I was coming into Seagull. And she coaxed them back into their holes. Now, I promise you, I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> on cloudy days, she took them for rides in her rickety wagon. And sometimes she even raced them. Have you ever raced any worms? I have not, but it sounds exciting. It really does. <laughs> Winnie Finn knew that the biggest earthworm ever was 10 feet long. She knew that an earthworm has five hearts and she knew which end was its head and which was its tail because the head always goes first when it moves. Lots of cool facts about worms. Yeah. When spring came to Quincy County, Winnie started thinking about the Quincy County Fair. The fair had prices for things like the best looking puppies, the best laying hens, and the best growing corn stalks. Hmm. Winnie Finn wanted to win a prize too. With the prize money, she could get herself a brand new wagon. Did they have a prize at the Quincy County Fair for the best worms? Oh no. I don't think so. I don't think they did either, but in this book, Winnie actually finds a way to help her friends out. And if you want to know what happens, you're going to have to read the rest of the book to see if Winnie gets that brand new wagon. And you know that you can go to your local library or your school library to see if they have Winnie Finn Worm Farmer. We actually have a worm farm here at Irma Siegel Elementary. No way. We do. Would you like to see it? Oh, I would love to see it. Boys and girls, why don't you come and join us at the worm farm. Let's see what that's all about. So, Miss Joanna, is this the worm farm? It is. Well, it, it's, it's really not what I was expecting to see. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I can. Think of it as a three-story apartment for worms. Okay. And um, worms like it cool and dark, so we have this black plastic to keep the light from getting in there. They live way down in the dirt, so you only see them coming out on rainy days like this when their homes are flooded. So tell me a little bit about what they might eat. Worms like to eat vegetable waste, so like a carrot top if you have carrot greens or carrot peelings or old newspaper also. So what I hear you say is they might be a, a little vegetarian. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think we can look inside and see if we see any worms and maybe what they may be eating? We sure can. Okay, let's do it. Let's open up the lid. Okay. So this worm farm lives in our steam lab here at Irma Siegel and Miss Gretchen takes care of it. She told me she fed it recently so that the worms wouldn't bite us while we were taking them. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> so there's newspaper on the top and you can see some banana peels and there's an apple core in there for them to snack on. You know, where do they normally hide? They like it dark so they're going to be down below everything. If you look in the, oh, let me go on this side. If you look in the corners, maybe under the apple core, there's a couple worms down in here, but they all are still going to be down in the lower levels. 
So Farmer Joanna, as you're trying to but find a worm, mm -hmm. yeah. and you did successfully, yeah. how, how did this get started? Um, so it got started, you fill up the lower level first and you buy red wriggler worms. They're the ones that have a voracious appetite. They love eating plant waste. And um, mm. so there was a purchase of red wriggler worms. They were put in the bottom and fed with some newspaper and some plant waste. And um, then as they eat that up, they move upwards to the top layers of this worm apartment. So Farmer Joanna, tell me why the worms prefer darkness over light. The sunlight dries them out. They need to have wet skin in order to survive. And so they want to stay where it's dark, where their food is, and where there's enough water for their skin mm -hmm. not to dry out. Yeah. Ooh, there's a bunch of oh, them right there. Oh, there sure are. There sure are. I can see them all. Eating up, what does she have? Shredded carrots and newspaper in here. These worms are great for the garden because they eat the vegetable waste and something called worm castings is what they poop out. And that is a wonderful fertilizer for a garden. So you take that and put it in the garden here at Irma Siegel? I do, yep. So when Miss Gretchen is, has a full tray here in the bottom when the worms have eaten all the stuff, then she will let me know and I'll come and get those worm castings to put in the garden. Wow, that's, that is, that's a lot of worms. A lot of worms. We're going to have healthy gardens. You know, if I don't, I will never hear the end of it. So I might as well do it. There you go. Mm -hmm. I see its little head because it's moving that way. Sure is. It's cold. It's a little <laughs> cold worm. Little they cold like worm. it. They and like it's moving. Moisture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just put mine back in. That's okay. okay with you. That's great. Farmer Joanna, that's a that's a pretty large one. I'm just glad there's not one in here that's 10 feet long like Me too. Winnie found. I've never seen one that big. These ones are pretty small compared yeah. to that. Yeah, absolutely. There's just a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Which means you must have a really healthy worm farm, would you say, since there's so many? I'd say so. Um, a pound of worms, which is a lot of worms, mm -hmm. eats half a pound of food a day. So a that would be quite a lot of lettuce and carrots and banana peels. Well, the soil is drying out in here, so let's cover these worms back up and keep them from drying out. Sounds great. I noticed um, you had some peppers growing in the classroom. How do, how do the worms benefit the sweet peppers as they grow. So right now it's springtime, so I'm starting seedlings to be planted out in the garden when the weather warms up, and peppers take a long time to grow. So with the soil that I use to start the seeds, I can mix worm castings in to help those seedlings grow big and strong before yeah. they get out in the garden as well, a fertilizer. You, you definitely have plenty of worms to work with, I so sure we do. should have a lot of healthy plants. Well, this has just been amazing. I, I never knew there was so much to learn about worms and the benefits, but before we go, I probably need to hold a worm again. Somebody will be so proud of me. All right, well, here's one right here. And that's a big one. That's mm -hmm. a big one. I'll mm -hmm. give you this one then. Okay. Here we go. Now back to you, Dr. Duke. Wow. Now that's a great example of how our farm to school program digs deeper into science. Oh, good pun. But I'm leaving the gardening and the worms to my farm to school team. I'll join you in that. However, here's a garden that I think you're going to love, Miss Johnson. It's an art inspired flower garden. Hey guys, this is Miss Davenport here. Uh, me and Asa are here from Northfield Elementary. Um, Asa, do you know what my favorite thing about spring is? What? Flowers. And today, Asa and I are going to be creating a flower garden. He's going to draw and I'm going to collage. So the first step when you're creating your flower garden is you need to gather your materials. Here, Asa is going to be drawing with crayons today. That was his choice. And I will be using a variety of papers, glue and scissors to do my collage. The first step is we are going to create a horizon line. That is where your sky and your ground meet. So Asa, do you want to grab a crayon? All right. We're going to take and we're going to draw a line in the middle of our paper. And that's going to separate our sky from our ground. Great job, Asa. Your horizon line looks really good. Now we need to add some color. So what color are you going to do your sky, Asa? Blue. He's going to do a blue sky. I think I'll do a blue sky too. So we're going to fill the top with blue and I think I'll do the bottom green. You 
fill all that white space in, Asa. Okay, boys and girls, while we finish our sky and ground, you can finish yours at home. All right, Asa, your sky and ground look really awesome. I've got mine finished here too. Um, Asa, it's time for flowers. Lots of artists are inspired by flowers. As you can see back here, we have Faith Ringgold and we have Romare Bearden, who are both really famous artists who used flowers as inspiration. So we also have some flowers out on our table, Asa, um, that we can look at while we create. So now we're going to add some flowers to our artwork. While Ace is drawing his flowers, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to draw a flower. So first, we're going to start with a circle in the center, kind of like these two flowers have here. After your circle, you're going to start drawing your petals. Our petals are kind of like an oval shape, and you can draw as many petals as you want. Different flowers have different number of petals. So we're gonna go, some petals have a point at the end. Okay, and we're gonna go all the way around our flower with those petals. Flowers are symmetrical, so they are the same all the way around. That's called radial symmetry. And then when you're finished, you can color in your flower with whatever colors you like. I'm gonna kind of do the same colors as this one has here. And this one kind of has some white around the edges, so I think I'll leave the edges white. And that's how you draw a quick, easy flower. Okay, so Wow, Asa, you're really working over there. You've got a lot done. Um, so let me get started on mine so I can catch up with you. I'm gonna show you how to collage the flower. Um, so just like we did on our drawing, we're gonna start off with a round center. So I've got some paper and scissors here and I'm going to cut a circle in the center. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna glue my circle down to my paper, just like so. Now I can get started on my petals. I think I'm gonna go with purple like I did before. And if you fold your paper before you cut it, you can cut a shape out. And ta-da, you have two pieces. Okay, I'm gonna glue my pieces down to my flower. Cut some more. I'm just gonna layer some with this color to give it a little bit of balance here. So we've got our petals down, now we need a stem. So I've cut this green paper and I'm going to tuck it right underneath to show some overlapping on my paper. Put a little glue on, and now I've got my stem. Now I think I'm gonna make one more flower out of tissue paper. Tissue paper is a little bit thinner than regular paper, um, and I've, that's what I've used for my background. So I'm gonna add some more flowers with some tissue paper in the front. All right, Asa, that looks awesome. And we both used similar colors in our artworks, but they look a lot different. And that is my favorite thing about art. Everybody's is different. So when you're creating at home, it doesn't have to look exactly like ours, right? Make it your own. I love how our students and teachers across the district are reaching outside of their classrooms to learn new things. Absolutely. From music in our schools to flowers in our art classes, we have a group of dedicated and talented teachers leading the way. And we want to thank them and our students and all of our stakeholders for making sure everyone in MCS feels known, safe, challenged, and empowered. And we can't wait to see you next time. Have a great day.